There was a time in the late 60s, early 70s in this country where several movements combined, the anti-war movement, the civil rights movement, the women's rights movement. And, and in, in numbers, there is political power, undeniably so, undeniably, and that's where we have to go. You either support human rights writ large or you're not really a human rights supporter. You're just in for your own kind. And if you think about it, that's exactly what the extremists do, think. I mean, you know, take any takfiri, uh, uh, Salafi extremists, they also are defending the rights of their people. And they'll do it at the expense of others. The Nazis were the same. They, all of them are the same. It's whether you actually can advocate on behalf of the rights of everyone. And I think it's actually going beyond the immediate community. I, I'll give you one example. When I went to Guatemala a few years ago, and we were sitting around a stage, uh, around a, a table, and there was this most amazing meeting. I mean, I, I, I've met so many representatives of civil society, but this was unusual. I mean, it was, uh, it was a really emotional workout. I mean, at, at times we were crying, laughing, screaming, people were denouncing. But what was so unusual is that I, when I sat down, I assumed that the person who was wearing indigenous wear was going to be speaking on behalf of the indigenous community, and they did not. They spoke, spoke on behalf of persons with disabilities. The person who was in a chair, I thought, would be doing that, instead spoke on behalf of the rights of, of women. And, and then you could see the power of the movement. Right? That's where the power is, right? Not in a fragmented way. You know, we all have to, we advance, you know, and push for our rights. But if I need you to support me, I have to be willing to support you. I can't just say, come up with an excuse why I'm not going to march with you. But I expect you to support me. It doesn't work like that.